Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about another unusual mystery coming from right here, the solar system, and more specifically this beautiful planet Neptune. Today we're going to be talking about something new that was just recently discovered by NASA, something that really surprised the scientists. Welcome to What The Math. Now, all in all, Neptune is a pretty mysterious system. It only has, so far, 14 moons that were discovered, and most of them are actually really small, with only one moon, this right here, Triton, being a somewhat uh, more similar to the moons around other gas giants. And even this moon is actually very unusual in that it seems to be from the outside of the system. It seems to be a captured moon that was actually captured by Neptune uh, several billion years ago. The reason we think this is not a moon that was originally here is because of its unusual orbital parameters. And as you can see here, it actually orbits against the flow. It orbits in the opposite direction of everything else in the system. It's a little bit easier to see if we look at it right here in Universe Sandbox, you'll notice that Triton is moving this way while every other moon moves against the flow. Now this is actually not the mystery we're talking about, because NASA has recently discovered something else unusual about two other moons very close to Triton. The moons we're going to be talking about are this right here, Naiad, and the um, other moon is this right here known as Thalassa. Both of these moons are not particularly exciting, they're about 100 kilometers or so in diameter and may resemble something like this, although possibly a little bit more flattened because according to NASA's recent observations, they do have a somewhat more prolonged shape. So possibly something similar to what you see right here in Space Engine. And for the most part, both moons are, I guess in some sense, not particularly exciting. They're orbiting relatively close to Neptune, these are the inner moons, um, at the same time they're slowly coming closer and closer to Neptune, and we believe that in the next few, possibly hundreds of millions or maybe maximum billion years, they're going to come so close to Neptune that they're going to essentially turn into really large rings rings similar to this, similar to Saturn's rings. And by then, Saturn will very likely lose its rings, so Neptune is going to be the new Saturn. But none of this was news to us. The news is actually in regards to the orbits of these two unusual moons. The two moons that were originally discovered back in 1989 by Voyager 2. And what NASA discovered is that both moons form this exceptionally unusual pattern. The most complex resonance we've ever actually seen. It sort of resembles this right here, and has been named by NASA as the Dance of Avoidance. Essentially, every seven and a half hours, the moons create this beautiful pattern that you see right here, allowing them to never actually hit each other. And in more mathematical terms, they form what's known as a 69 to 73 pattern or resonance. So basically for every 69 orbits of a single moon, the other one does 73 orbits, but at the same time they form this exceptional pattern that you see. Something that we've actually never seen or never really knew was possible. And because of this unusual and beautiful pattern, they never have a chance to collide. Even though technically the distance between their orbits is around 1800 kilometers, because of this beautiful dance, they never come closer to roughly around 3500 kilometers to each other. And that's actually pretty close considering that the moons are only about 100 kilometers in diameter. So they do come close enough to each other, but not close enough to collide. And the mathematical estimates for this pattern suggest that this is an extremely, extremely stable pattern. It can technically last for billions of years. However, it's not going to last for billions of years because over time both moons are expected to move closer and closer to Neptune. And all of this is because of one simple reason, Triton. So the moon Triton, as I've mentioned in one of the previous videos, is actually a kind of an invader. It's a very similar to Pluto object that very likely came from the same region as Pluto but was captured by Neptune as its own moon. And as it was captured, because its mass is a little bit higher than other moons, here's actually what that tiny moon Naiad looks like in comparison. As you can see, it's exceptionally small and not massive at all. So basically, Triton kind of kicked out other moons. And because of its unusual orbit in retrograde motion, or basically opposite motion to everything else, it eventually caused other moons to slowly lose their orbits. And this is exactly what's happening to uh, Naiad and its unusual dense partner that you see right here. It's slightly larger, but not by much. So as these two moons danced around one another, 
Crichton is slowly causing them to move closer and closer, and eventually um, all of the moons of Neptune will probably fall into Neptune. First the smaller moons, like these two, these will be probably the first ones to fall, and eventually Triton itself is also going to collide. But possibly um, in the next few billions of years, when most likely the entire solar system will change dramatically for other reasons. But because of these recent observations that NASA made using NASA's Hubble Space Telescope, they also were able to finally calculate their mass and of course their density. And it seems like their density is what we expected it to be. It's a little bit higher than water, suggesting that they're probably mostly made out of rocks mixed with ices, or basically things like methane, ethane, possibly some water as well, and a lot of other things similar to what other things like comets are made out of. In other words, they're very similar to um, other moons around objects like Saturn and Jupiter that we've studied in a lot of detail. And all of this suggests that, once again, once these objects come really, really close to Neptune, and we can even try to do this here in Universe Sandbox, by slowly moving them closer to the, to the planet, um, they will start falling apart due to the tidal effects and form practically identical rings to the rings of um, Saturn. Now, Neptune already has rings, but we actually haven't studied them that well because they're so difficult to see. I'm going to try to find them for you right here in Space Engine because this simulation does do a good job at showing us what they might look like. So it might be a little bit difficult to see, but that's actually what they sort of look like. It's these dark, very, very thin rings that both Neptune and Uranus have. These were very likely formed by slightly different formation, and I've discussed this in one of the previous videos, but um, overall they do have rings already. But it seems that in case of Neptune it might get another set. Once these uh, two moons come closer and closer, they will very likely fall apart and form a very beautiful and a very familiar set of rings that's going to stay with Neptune for several hundreds of millions of years. Although it's very likely we're never really going to see it because by then humanity might not really be the same anymore, or possibly not even exist at all. Anyway, so that's kind of what we've discovered about Neptune, and it's a pretty interesting discovery because when it comes to resonances and when it comes to um, various types of stable orbits of several objects, this here is definitely the most complex we've ever seen and kind of creates a new interesting phenomenon for us to study. For example, now scientists might start wondering, what about other moons? Are they also forming some sort of a different resonance that we need to investigate as well? Because a lot of these moons are in a really stable relationship with one another. And this also means that if you were to look at other planets out there, specifically exoplanets around stars with many different other planets, they too might form these unusual resonances that we've never really considered before. In other words, we could have a very stable, habitable world somewhere in a system that has a lot of really hectic motion. But only by studying this hectic motion in a little bit more detail would we ever be able to figure out that there is a lot of stability here. But until we discover something else, that's really it about Neptune and that's it about this new discovery. It's definitely something interesting to consider, especially if you like patterns and mathematics, but I'm sure one day we'll discover something else about both Neptune, Uranus and other gas giants that we've never really thought about before. Until then, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye. And by the way, maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. Also, consider supporting this channel by buying one of these beautiful t-shirts, handcrafted by someone more talented than me. Because I'm actually a horrible artist, and I would never be able to create this. Anyway, on that note, I'll see you tomorrow, bye-bye.